Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Mohammed, and uh, here in this part, I want to review some of the results on single cache systems. You know, single cache systems have been investigated in computer science and systems, you know, deeply. There are a lot of beautiful, interesting results there. So, for example, you can see book chapters or part of the courses on this part. Here, we just want to review some of the most important results very briefly. We don't want, we cannot actually cover all of them. So, what is the system? In this, uh, you know, problem, we have a server. We have a server which has a lot of files. And then we have a cache which has a space to cache M file. And then we have a user. And so the user requests a sequence of files, one, at, one after each other. For example, first it asks for the red file, then blue file, then blue file, then red file, and so on. And so for each request, we have two scenarios. It may have, it may have a cache hit. It means that the file that the user is requested is here. For example, it asks for the red file, and the red file is here. So we fetch the file. The user fetches the file from the cache. Or we can have a cache miss. Cache miss means that, means that the file that the user is requested is not there. So we have to fetch it from the server. In this case, we may update the cache for future use. Okay. So we start any question for the setup. So we have two cases, cache hit and cache miss. Okay. For cache hit, we just fetch it from here. For cache miss, we need to update the, we need to update the cache. and fetch the files from the server. So our uh, target is to find an algorithm to update the cache such that the number of, uh, uh, the number of cache miss is minimum. Why? Because we need to fetch the file from server, which can be in the remote area, which can be in the kind of remote, it, it can be in the uh, you know, far distance. Or for example, the delay to, to fetch the file from the server can be large. So we start with a very non-realistic case. Assume that you know the sequence of demands non-causally. So for now, you know that for future, the user will first ask for the red file, then ask for the blue file, then blue file, and so on. So clearly, this case is not realistic. Okay? So we don't know, generally, in the systems, usually, we don't know what each user would, would ask for. So what do you do? What, how do you update the cache content? Any idea, any suggestion? So if you knew what user will ask in the future, how do you run the cache? OK. What else? Actually, the most, uh, the optimum algorithm is called bloody algorithm, which has been proposed in uh, 1966. It says, whenever you have a cache miss, then evict the file which is requested farthest in the future, okay, and replace it with the new file. So let me explain how. For example, here, assume that we have this sequence, and initially the cache has the, uh, the, the, the green file and the red file. So first we have the red file. So OK, the, cache is, uh, the file is there. We don't change the cache. So the cache, it will be green and red. Uh, it will be the same. Now we have a new file, which is not there, the blue file. So we need to fetch it from the server and update the cache content. So and then we need to evict one of these two files. Which, this, which of these two files should be evicted? We look at the future and see that we need the red file like in two steps, and we need the green file in three steps. So the, the file that you lose the game is, is the green file. So we, re, we evict the green file, and we replace it with the blue file. The next request is blue. It is already there, no change. Then we have red. Red is there, no change, and so on. Okay? So <clears throat> this algorithm is optimum. Here, we cannot explain the, uh, uh, the optimality proof. It is long. There are various solutions, various actually uh, you know, way to prove it uh, based on dynamic programming or combinatorial approaches. Here, I just want to give some feeling why the thing that we think, the idea that we think it is optimum is not optimum. Okay? So I'm asking this question, why we shouldn't cache the, uh, uh, the most frequent file in the future? 
assume that the sequence of requests are like this, okay? So first you have 100 blue requests, then we have 300 red, and then we have 300 green, okay? So based on this idea, caching the most frequent file in the, in the future, we should cache the green file and red file, because these two are, each of them are 300, the other file is, uh, is 100. So then how many missed we have? We have one miss here, one miss here, one miss here, one miss here, and so on. So we will have 100 misses, okay? So if you scale this problem, the number of misses can be, you know, uh, unbounded. Now let's consider the bloody algorithm, okay? So and they assume that the starting case is the same. So first we have the green and red. We start from the same, you know, starting point. Then Bloody says that, okay, you have a miss, replace one of the files. So here, here we ask for green file. So the green, uh, we ask for the, the system asks for the blue file. So we look at the history and see that we need the green file furthest in the, farthest in the future. So we evict the green file, replace it with the blue. So we have one miss here. There is no miss here, there is no miss here. And here we have another miss. So we replace the blue file with green and there is no miss. So we have two misses. Yeah? So is it clear why it should be optimal? Okay, of course this is a non-realistic case. Go ahead. Yes, I, I understand your point. So you are saying that I should, I need to know the, the first f uh, forest that we need to evict. We don't, I don't need to entire history, but it, 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 we start with a very basic structure. True, you are right. Okay. Of course, this is not a realistic, uh, you know, case, but it has been used for as a baseline. So they call it bloody algorithm. They call it mean algorithm. They call it offline algorithm. So this is a baseline. That is, that is used for, uh, you know, cache systems. Now let us consider on, on uh, you know, more realistic case when we have IID requests. So assume that the sequence of requests are IID from a distribution that we know. So in this case, each file has, has certain popularities. For example, this file has this popularity, this file has this popularity, okay? So for each file, we have a popularity uh, number, okay? And assume that we know this distribution beforehand. So this distribution is given, okay? Remember, we have a space to cache M files. Which files should we cache? Any idea? So sequence is IID, always from this distribution, okay? Any suggestion? So, so in, in this case, you know, the common sense actually is correct. So we should cache the M most popular file because the sequence of files are always, uh, this uh, is IID always selected from this. So if we cache the most popular file, then the, uh, the expected number of miss is minimum. Okay? So this algorithm is called highest popularity first. So we cache the M most popular file and it is optimal. It is easy to show it. Before continue, I want to give you some comment on the, these popularity distributions. Usually, actually, one of the challenges that we have for content delivery network is that this distribution is, has, a, has a very heavy tail. It means that it goes down very, very slowly. Okay? And it is one of the challenges because the, the probability that users choose files from this area is not that small. Okay? The most popular model for popularity distribution is called zip distribution, in which if you order the files based on their popularities, the probability goes down with probability of i to the power of minus alpha. Okay? So the pro pop, uh, popularity of number file number i is proportional to i to the power of minus alpha, when, when, where alpha is something between 0.8 to 1.8. Okay? So it goes down very slowly. Now, let us consider the case where, again, it, the, the, the request, the sequence of requests are IID from a distribution, but the distribution is unknown, okay? So again, it is IID 
It's not correlated in time. It comes from a distribution, but this time we don't know the distribution. Okay? So what should we do? Exactly. So the idea here is, is that we should, we should be able to estimate the, this, the, this distribution from the history. So what we do, there is an algorithm called least frequently used, which is based on estimation, estimating the popularity distribution from the history of the request. So what do we do? We track the number of times that each file has been requested. Okay? And each time that we have a cache miss, we evict a file which has been less popular in the history, and, uh, and it is already in the cache. Okay? So you can, you, can, uh, you can guess this is optimal or asymptotically optimal. But in general system, in real, real world, the request files are correlated in time. They are not IID. Okay? The second thing is that the file popularities are time varying. And there is, there is no uh, model available to, for, for, this, for this sequence. For example, here, we have some curves. The popularity of some file, two files, we extract these curves from the Netflix price data. You can see that, for example, a movie, Troy, has been released at this time. Okay? It became very popular. Then it lost, over the time, it lost its popularity. Again, meanwhile, there is not another, another movie has been released. Very popular at the beginning, then it goes down. Okay? So what should we do in this case? Okay? If, it is, uh, if we don't have any model for the system, if it is not IID, what should we do? Any idea, any suggestion? How about looking at the recent history? Instead of looking at the entire history, just consider a window of L recent requests, okay? And then apply, for example, LFU on these uh, L recent uh, requests, okay? So the problem would be, how should we choose L? Should it be fixed or adaptively changed? If we want to change it, how should we change it? Okay? It's very difficult. Alternatively, there is a simple but very powerful algorithm for this case, which is called least recently used. Okay? So in current caching system, either this, this algorithm is used or some you know, modification of this is, is currently used in, this, in practical systems. Let me explain how it works. Okay, for this algorithm, we don't need any assumption. Basically, it is individual sequence approach. We don't need any pro, uh, probabilistic assumption for the, for the sequence. Okay. The way that we do it is like this. Each time that we have a um, uh, cache miss, we evict the file which has been least recently used. Okay. So we look, at the, uh, we look at the history, and we evict the file which is, which is the oldest in the, in the cache. Okay. So for example here, let's assume that we start the system with this uh, cache content, the green file and the red file. And the red file has been used least recently. We recently used the green file, but the red file is a little bit older. And now assume that the system asks for the red file. So clearly, the red file is here. They have to fetch it from the cache. But then the recently used now is green file, because green, the red file is, has been recently used. So green file is now not new. The, green, the, sorry, the red file is new, the green file is old. Now let's assume that the system asks for the blue file. Okay? One of these two files have been, has, has to be evicted. Here we evict the green file because this is the oldest one. Okay? So we evict the green file, okay? we replace it with the blue file, but now the red file is the least recently used, and so on. This scheme is uh, very powerful, as I said. To explain the, its power, we need to define a new notion, which is called competitive optimality. What does it mean? We say an, al online, al uh, an online algorithm is C competitively optimum if for any possible sequence, the number of misses that we have, if we apply that online algorithm, is C times the number of cache misses if we apply the bloody algorithm. 
Okay? So basically, it compares two cases. In one case, we, uh, it is offline. We knew the future. We know the future, and we can apply optimum bloody algorithm. Okay? And in another case, we have this online algorithm. We don't know the future at all. So it says, if the number of misses that we have in this case is C times the number of misses for the bloody algorithm, then the algorithm is C competitively optimal. And this has to be true for any possible uh, uh, sequence of demand. Okay? There are a lot of uh, you know, competitively optimality, com competitive optimality results for uh, 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 LRU. Here I just explained one of them. Okay? It says, compare two systems. The first system, we have the cash size is M, and we don't know the future, so we have to apply, and we apply LRU. The other system, the cash size is M over 2, the cash size is half, but we know the future. Okay? So we can apply bloody algorithm. It says the number of misses that we have here is at most twice of this one. So this, 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 is one of the, this is one of the theorems that shows the strength of this uh, you know, LRU algorithm. Any questions so far? <coughs> uh, the, the load, the no, because it depends on the sequence. And the amount of memory Yes. So it's a sequence-based algorithm. So for each sequence, but the claim is very strong. It says for each possible sequence, if you know the future, the algorithm is optimal. It's a very, very strong, uh, you know, result. So what's the comparison between the So it is, it is interesting. So sometimes we can compare two algorithms, you know, we say, for example, the number of misses in this one is, this, is like twice or three times of the other one. Sometimes it is better to play with two parameters in the system to say that, for example, the curve that we have, if you consider two dimensional, they are within, within like factor of two of each other. Okay? For this one, if you apply for, for LRU, I think if you don't do that, then it is not constant. We can show that LRU is M competitive uh, compared to the bloody algorithm. Okay? But if we, we consider two parameters, if we play with cache as well, then in two dimensional, you are within factor of two. Memory and uh, you know, number of misses. Uh, OK. Now, here I just want to uh, review another case as well. Let's assume that. Now our, our target is to, to minimize the, the peak rate here. Okay? So, so far, we wanted to minimize average or number of miss for each sequence. Now we want to minimize the peak rate here. Assume that the server has n files, the cache size is m, and our target is to minimize the peak rate in this link. Then what should we cache? So this time, we should be ready for any possible request. Okay? In this case, we can take m over n fraction of each file. Okay? So together, it is the, it's like m file. Okay? And cache it here. Okay? Now you can see that for any possible demand, for example, let's say we ask for blue file, then this part of the blue file is already here. We need to deliver the rest of it. Okay? So therefore, the, we, need, we need to deliver this part. Therefore, per request, the peak rate would be 1 minus m over n. I just said that because we want to use this idea later for the information theoretic part. So I think it's, yeah, that's it for the single cache. For the, in the next part, we will consider, uh, we'll consider cache networks. And we will see that some of the intuitions that we have for single cache, and we use it right now in the current system for cache network, actually, it doesn't work. It is uh, uh, strongly suboptimal. Okay? So we have like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then we start uh, the part three. <laughs>